Hi, I'm Helen, and this is a story from Japan called The Jellyfish and the Monkey. Are you ready? Three, two, one, stories begun. Once, deep beneath the waves, there was an underwater palace, and in the palace there lived a beautiful queen. Not just any kind of queen, this was a dragon queen. Her scales shimmered in the light and she had long, beautiful hair and fiery breath. But one day she became sick. She didn't feel like eating anymore. And as the weeks went by, she grew weaker and weaker. Her skin on her face grew pale and her scales didn't seem to shine anymore. What's happening? asked the king. Why is she sick? I've given her everything. She never even has to leave the palace. I know what she needs, said the lobster. You see, Monkeys' livers are full of nutrients, and if we give that to the queen to eat, she'll grow strong again. Now the king had grown so worried, he had thrown away the jewels of the ebb and flow of the tide. And that was what he used to use to control the movement of the sea. And this tidal sequence used to churn up food from the bottom of the sea, for all the starfish and the crabs and the lobsters and the mussels would eat. So they all were worried when the king stopped working and stayed beside the queen's bed. I know, said the jellyfish, I will go and find a monkey and bring it here so the queen can eat its liver. You see, in those days, the jellyfish had a hard shell and strong legs and could walk on water. So that's what the jellyfish did. When the jellyfish arrived at the beach, there he saw a monkey hanging in a permacent tree. And the monkey looked down and said, oh, Would you like some fruit? Hmm. No, said the jellyfish. We've got so much food in our underwater palace. I'm absolutely full. Underwater palace, said the monkey. Oh, I've heard of the amazing banquets you have. Is it true that your dining table is a mile long? <laughs> of course said the jellyfish, and that's just a normal breakfast. You should see our feast. In fact, we're having one tonight. Would you like to come? <gasps> Would I, said the monkey. She jumped down and she wrapped her furry arms around the jellyfish's shell, and off they swam. Ah, oh, what a shame, said the jellyfish, as they arrived at the palace gates, that we have to tear out your liver today. I wish we'd met sooner. The monkey's fur stood on end, and she thought, quickly. Oh, my liver, she said. What a shame. If I'd known, I would have brought it with me. It's hanging on the tree. Oh no, said the jellyfish. Don't worry, said the monkey. Let's rush back as quickly as we can. If we're fast, we won't miss any of the feast. I'll bring the liver back. Now I'm sure you can guess what happens. The moment the monkey's paws touched that tree, she scampered right up to the top, out of reach. And she stayed there, until the jellyfish was long gone. Well, back at the palace, when the jellyfish arrived empty-handed, all the other sea creatures began to beat him with sharp coral and stinging stones. <laughs> ow, ow, ow! cried the jellyfish. His cries brought the queen from her bed. Get away from him, you bullies, she said, feeling stronger than she ever had. She picked up the jellyfish, and cradled him in her arms. And then she grabbed the jewels of the ebb and flow of the tide and stormed out of the palace gates, never to be seen again. But the tides kept turning, so she must have been out there somewhere. And sometimes you might see a jellyfish swirling about in the waves, and you'll probably notice he doesn't seem to have any bones at all. And that's why his body is so soft from the beating of the sea creatures. And that is the end of the jellyfish and the monkey story. Thank you for listening. Three, two, one, stories.